welcome to the gathering's first ever virtual Mardi Gras celebration. My name is Lynn Hildenbrand, and I'm the executive director of the gathering and your proud MC for this evening. On behalf of our organization, I'd like to thank you for joining us here tonight in celebration of Fat Tuesday, AKA Mardi Gras. We celebrate this evening in honor of the hungry and homeless populations in Milwaukee, who we are humbled to serve each and every day. At the gathering, we have a mission to provide good, sustainable meals to those who would otherwise go hungry or without. Since the gathering was founded back in 1982, we've been serving free community meals to the hungry and homeless throughout Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In the very beginning, we started by serving soup and sandwiches on Saturdays. Today, we're operating four meal sites and three meal programs with only 10 staff members. That's why we really need your help here tonight. Last year was different, to say the least. And although we wished to welcome in 2021 with a huge Mardi Gras celebration in person, we instead are staying smart and staying safe and staying home. So thank you for being part of this virtual celebration. Although 2020 was challenging, we still have so much to celebrate. And that is exactly why we're here today. We are celebrating our accomplishments as an organization, the accomplishments of our meal guests, and of course, the accomplishments of you, our incredible donors. We welcome all individuals to our table, regardless of age, gender, race, ethnicity, or religion. As a non-discriminatory meal program, we are proud to say that pre-COVID-19, we were serving nearly 60,000 meals to the hungry and homeless populations each and every year. COVID-19 has impacted marginalized communities at a high rate, and our meal guests need your support now more than ever before. We would not be able to serve our mission without the support of our long-standing partners and sponsors. And I'd like to thank Bader Philanthropies and the Greater Milwaukee Foundation for sponsoring this event tonight. We so appreciate your ongoing support. We also want to spend a, send a special thank you out to our partners, Running Rebels, Hunger Task Force, Feed in America, and the City of Milwaukee. Also to our friends at the Episcopal Diocese of Milwaukee, because we're live in their building right here and now. I sincerely hope that you enjoy this virtual Mardi Gras celebration. We're all truly grateful that you are here to celebrate with us. I also want to take a moment to invite you to participate in the live chat. Just to the right of the video viewer, you can connect with our board members, staff, volunteers, and fellow donors. This is a great way for us to feel connected and stay safe until we can see each other face to face once again. And if you've purchased a fat or very fat ticket, you should have received dinner delivered right to your door by one of our fabulous volunteers. Along with this incredible meal, you should have received beads and a mask to help the night even be more festive and the meal that Tandem provided so well for us. We're very excited about Tandem and our partnership. We hope you enjoy this meal as you celebrate with us tonight. Thank you once again to our partners at the Tandem for preparing and donating the fabulous Cajun-inspired meal. And don't forget to purchase your raffle tickets. There's a tab at the top of the page where you can purchase tickets and also make your donations. I also want to make sure to mention that the raffle is going on tonight will close in the middle of the program. So be sure to grab as many tickets as possible while you still can. Some of our amazing prizes include a Milwaukee Brewers package, complete with an autographed baseball by Ryan Braun and a bobblehead of Kristen Yelich, plus some other fun things. We also have several home-cooked gathering chef-prepared meals for up to six people. Our volunteers are volunteering even harder, cooking food for you all as a prize. The meals will be prepared and delivered right to your door. This item is something truly one of a kind. We also have a few more raffle prizes that will be called out later on in the evening, so stay tuned. Now, if you look to the top of your screen, you'll notice there is a button leading you to the medium's room. I'd like to officially introduce you to Kat Regan, our guest medium, who will be hosting her own very special breakout room this evening. During these first 40 minutes of the program, you have the opportunity to enter the medium's room and learn more about Kat and all the energies that surround us. For over 30 years, Kat's use of her Ongoing holistic trainings and intuitive healing gifts have been offered in a variety of venues across the state. Kate also has many specialties, but tonight we're focusing on her sixth sensory intuition. When you click into the medium's room above, you'll learn more about Kate's story and the energies surrounding us tonight. Later on, we'll also be joined by our guest saxophonist, Olu Sijuade, performance scientist. We're so honored to showcase Olu's magnificent talents here tonight. But aside from being a professional musician, Olu is a professional exercise physiologist specializing in human performance. He facilitates youth leadership programs and restorative practice throughout Milwaukee, as well as being responsible for building community-based partnerships. Olu has facilitated peace education workshops for organizations across the state. 
And though we're celebrating Mardi Gras tonight, we're also celebrating black history this entire month, highlighting local icons who are making a true impact in our community. Olu is one of those icons. So I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy Mardi Gras with us as we welcome special guests, including staff, partners, and even a couple of our meal guests to share some personal stories about the gathering. To kick us off this evening's program, please welcome Austin Pettigrew, the breakfast coordinator from our Running Rebel site. Austin and his Southside dinner court counterpart, Lisa, will share more about their experiences working for the gathering and how they change lives on a daily basis. Then, via Zoom, Michael Jonas from Hunger Task Force will share a few words with us. So Austin, please take it away. If you guys haven't met me yet, I'm Austin. I'm the coordinator here. Um, new promotion, so yay me. Uh, two years ago, um, I started off as a security guard at our old uh, location. Um, and honestly, I did a little bit more than just the security job. Uh, I, the gathering caught wind of that and they end up deciding to hire me on as a gatekeeper. Uh, I was a gatekeeper for about a year and a half until just recently they made me the coordinator here at the Running Rebel site. Um, it's been such a humbling experience. Um, one thing about the gathering, we're more than just the soup kitchen. Uh, we're more than just feeding the homeless, uh, to be honest. We're kind of like a safe haven for some of our people. Uh, and it's not just for our meal guests. Um, it's also a safe haven for uh, myself as a staff member and um, to our volunteers as well. Um, one thing that I love about this place is that, uh, like I said before, we don't just serve the homeless, but we also partner up with community advocates that come out every week faithfully and help out um, a lot of our meal guests, whether it's to find shelter or um, to help them with the government aid. The only antidote to poverty is opportunity and resources, and that's what we offer here at The Gathering. Um, and I love every minute of it, every uh, second working here, working with volunteers. One thing I do miss though is serving with our serving our meal guests inside. Since COVID happened, uh, they, a lot of things changed. We're starting to serve at the door now, and it's not that one-on-one -on -one connection anymore. Um, I can't wait till we get back to serving inside with uh, our meal guests. So, um, what I'm going to do now is introduce Lisa. Lisa, you can have the floor. Austin. Um, Austin, you inspired me to talk about why I started working here at the gathering over 30 years ago as a volunteer. It was actually one of my high school students who told me what a great opportunity it would be to live the things I taught and so I started in the 80s when the gathering had just begun and I've been very very excited to be a part of the volunteer group and now that I'm also part of the dinner program, a little bit more part of staff, I'm equally excited, even more excited, to be part of the decision making and to see where the gathering is going. We've been through a lot. We've expanded over these more than 30 years. We've added faces. There are still some of us old people around. And this year, we actually got to move again. We went from one site um, on the south side to a brand new one that's bursting with excitement and life and energy. But of course, we've had other changes, and that was COVID. That's been a huge challenge for all of us. We feel so deeply for our guests that to see them having to deal with this. When we started and everything shut down, we had homeless guests that had no place to get water, no place to eat the to-go meals that we were handing them out the door in order to keep each other safe. I'm so grateful we have evolved over this time to being able to give people water, to give them better meals, to give them, in the small amount of time we have, some, some comfort, some fellowship, which has always been part of our mission as well. We couldn't have done it alone. Our leadership here at The Gathering has supported everything that we do, and we've had outside partners support as well. Hunger Task Force has been great in providing things that they normally hadn't provided before. They were our provider of food and how to keep food, but now they also provide how do we stay safe. And so I'd like to pass this on to Jonas, who represents Hunger Task Force, and he can talk further about how he has worked with us to keep our guests and our staff safe through this time period.
Thank you, Lisa. And yes, you do provide support and fellowship to the people that come. I'm the food bank director at Hunger Task Force. I've been around, let's just say, since the 90s. And I do remember when the gathering joined our network in uh, roughly 2000. And so you've been working with us all those years, providing so much help and guidance and support to people, uh, people that are really in need. And we're glad to be in partnership with you, supporting you, allowing you to provide the great service that you do. The care and the quality of food that's provided by the three gathering sites is really incredible. And um, the love that is apparent in the food um, just gets extended to the people that receive it. I remember when I first got involved, it was through a meal program. My parents um, sponsored one night of a month with a meal in their church, Immaculate Conception in Bayview. And so once a month, we would prepare this meal and take it and serve it. Even when I moved to Chicago for a job, I came back on the third Monday every month because it was a really important touchstone for me. And luckily, a few years later, I was able to join um, the staff at the Hunger Task Force. So um, I'm right there with you and all the people that make things happen, make the positive things happen in our community that you don't always hear about and it's so important to hear about. So we're really glad that we're able to help you. This year was a particularly difficult year for so many people, not only the people that you serve, but yes, we tried to be there to be supportive, to bring supplies that you would need to stay safe, everything from sanitizer and gloves and masks and uh, even supplies to distribute your food, such as clamshells and bags for passing out the meals at the door. I just recently saw photographs of the awning that was added at the new Ascension location so that people that were waiting in line for their meals would be protected somewhat from the weather. So again, you guys think of everything and what's most important is you think of the dignity of the people that you serve. I'm glad to be a part of any kind of team which you're a member. Jonas, thank you so much for your kind words. We really are all a team and we are all in this together. So thanks so much for those kind words. I really appreciate that. We have really seen the, t the term community come to life this past year. Our partners, friends, neighbors, volunteers, board and staff have come together to provide our guests with not only fresh, nutritious meals, but many other additional services they need every single day. When we moved our downtown location to Running Rebels, back in the fall of 2019, we began supplying Running Rebels after school program with bag lunches and hot meals. Today we still provide 125 lunches for the youth mentored by the Running Rebels on a weekly basis. We partner with the Running Rebels to help ensure that Milwaukee's youth receive nutritious filling lunches as many families in the Lindsay Heights neighborhood struggle regularly with food insecurities. In July of 2019, we partnered up with Feeding America, Amazon Running Rebels, and Walnut Way and launched our Tuesday grocery giveaway. For anyone in need of fresh groceries, we provide groceries um, to the community, about 6,000 pounds every single week. And tonight we're gonna to hear from Chris, our Feed in America driver, who's been responsible for delivering food to our Running Rebels meal site since the program began. Chris has been extremely supportive since day one and we're so lucky to have him. After we hear from Chris, Beth Lapham from the Milwaukee County Housing Division will take the floor speaking to her involvement at our breakfast program and with our meal guests. Following Beth, we'll hear from some of our meal guests themselves and hear how the services we offer have benefited their lives. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Chris Dickinson from Feed America. Chris? Thanks, Lynn. My name is Chris. I'm, I'm a, I work at Feed in America here in the community. I just wanted to thank everybody for the outpour and how this uh, has grown. We started about six months ago with roughly about a thousand pounds of food we deliver a month. Now we're up to at least 10 to 12,000 pounds. I've seen it grow from the start to now. It's a huge success and it's really affect the community. 
as far as uh, additional foods and especially during a time with this pandemic and a lot of people aren't working, this is an added help to the community. Um, the partnership with the gathering has been very, very good. Um, we, with our deliveries, we do a direct connect and they can get the food right to the community. It doesn't have to go to our warehouse and sit and get sorted. We get it right out to the, get it right out to the community on time. My name is Beth Lappin. I am a homeless outreach worker with Milwaukee County's Housing Division. I am a proud partner of The Gathering. Um, for years, The Gathering has given us space and the opportunity to connect with their guests so that we can find individuals who are in need. Not only do they allow us to come and visit and give us safe space to socially distance and help individuals with their housing needs, but they also help us think out of the box at times and even allow me to pick up meals and deliver them to people who aren't able to make it out there. The gathering also serves as a great, safe, and reliable meeting place um, for when I have an individual that I need to connect with or haven't been able to find and I'm worried about. I know that I have a place in the community at the gathering to visit, to wait for someone, and to look for other individuals that might be in need. We are homeless outreach workers. We do most of our work out in the community, on the streets, in parks, under bridges. Um, we partner with a number of agencies that do the same kind of work, but we know that we cannot reach every individual in need, even though we feel like we work very hard to cover every inch of Milwaukee County to look for individuals who need assistance. We know that we cannot um, find all of them on our own. So having a place like The Gathering where we can connect with individuals, where we can literally put ourselves where they are. We have been a very proud partner of The Gathering for a number of years and we look forward to continuing. Thank you to The Gathering and thank you to all of you who support them. Actually, I was homeless uh, December the 13th um, due to uh, basically leaving the house. There was a festival with roaches. Um, my journey started homeless. It's actually um, more of uh, the COVID-19 actually hitting the community and as myself and as well. Um, in, in December, about the 13th, um, I left the house and uh, became homeless. And then the journey started with just basically resources. Here, I'm um, at the gathering. Um, I basically, my first time, um, I went to um, multiple more uh, homeless shelters, the breach, the guest house, um, place in the hotel. Um, now, my journey actually uh, about to end as far as the housing. Um, I don't know when, but it probably will um, with that. I'm just very thankful um, for the resources in Milwaukee, as well as the community as a whole. Um, basically, for me, uh, my story don't end here as long as I live. Um, I don't have too much else to say, but uh, with that, thank you. Yeah. It's painful for us to hear from guests like Edmund, guests that are evicted or removed from their housing due to uncontrollable or unforeseen circumstances. Edmund is one of our breakfast guests, and he explained to us that his current situation has him staying at the Milwaukee Rescue Mission. Our goal is to connect Edmund and others who are struggling to find permanent shelter with community partners like Beth. Though it may be difficult to hear some of these stories, these are the stories that make up the gathering and those that we serve. We have moved locations twice within the past two years so that we can continue to better serve our community. Labor Day 2019, we moved our largest meal site from the center of downtown to Lindsay Heights neighborhood. The search for this new home felt endless. We searched and we searched for the right fit and finally, without hesitation, Running Rebels community in the Lindsay Heights neighborhood welcomed us with open arms. 
Our meal program was a much needed resource for the surrounding community and we're grateful that the majority of our downtown meal guests followed us to the, with the move. In October 2020, we then moved our longtime Southside meal site. Our previous location was not in the best working condition and at the gathering, we pride ourselves on serving our community with dignity and respect. We needed a home for our Southside meal program that reflected our values. So in October, Ascension Lutheran Church located just down the street from our old meal site, welcomed us with open arms as well. We're grateful to have a new home in the Clark Square community where our guests can now feel safe and welcome. Oh, and don't forget about the raffle. I encourage everyone to keep buying those raffle tickets. We're getting ready for our drawing here shortly. Don't forget the raffle will close just after Don Barnett leaves the stage, and that's just a few minutes away. But before dawn, we will hear from one of our meal guests, Julia. Julia speaks of her experience with us and also the overall need for the gathering and its services in our community. Following Julia, Alderman Stamper will join us via Zoom. And lastly, we'll hear from my good friend, Don Barnett, the co-executive director of the Running Rebels. Welcome Julia, Alderman Stamper, and Don Barnett. I'm here just to say about my experience with the uh, gathering. For me, also very special. Uh, I had too many ideas to say because um, they are so completely important, not, not only for me, just for the whole community. Uh, they treat us very nicely. They are so very kind. They are very respectful. Uh, they don't practice any kind of discrimination or racism. I mean, everybody are welcome, and uh, they are here for us with different organizations. Uh, I'm going to say more. Uh, we had delicious food, good case, warm um, food, you know, hot dogs, lasagna, veggies, chicken, sandwiches, hot dogs, water. Um, for me, it was a very wonderful experience to spend my time with them just because I am part of the community looking forward <clears throat> just it's not easy to live in Milwaukee Milwaukee we had uh, too much uh, segregation and racism discrimination too but for me it's a wonderful city I love to live in Milwaukee and uh, now um I continue coming to the uh, gathering because the food is continuing uh, delicious. I love it, I like it. Uh, I say the treatment they have for everybody is amazing. Another uh, nice experience is I have here too many friends, like uh, my good buddies, people we are dreaming to have a freedom country, uh, good justice, justicia, your respect with dignity. Everybody, we are coming here to spend in our time. Not only for food, just we are coming here just for company, for relationships, for kindness. So this is a magic place for me. Thank you, thank you. Well, happy Mardi Gras, everyone. This is your 15th District Alderman, Russell Stamper II. And I'm happy today to speak to the community about the gathering and the relationship with the community. Let me begin by thanking Julie. As you can see, she's a proud member of the community and she's and satisfied with the gathering and pleased with how much of an impact they have been for the community and particularly uh, her stomach. <laughs> she uh, explains very well how delicious the food is and how she relies on this food on a regular basis. And I'm sure the entire community feels the same way. I've heard and seen nothing but positive perspectives and positive opinions about the gathering and their impact on the community, particularly in feeding the hungry. They have been there for a little bit over a year. I want to say um, Labor Day 2020. And since they've been there, there have been nothing but a success and a great impact on our community over there. The food is delicious. 
the camaraderie, camaraderie is delicious. And most of all, they care about the community, their patients, and they are looking to more just feed them, but be the, a resource for uh, their overall success in their lives. I first heard about them through um, my good friends and partners, um, Dawn and Victor Barnett with Running Rebels, a 40 year organization in the 15th Automatic District who have been my partners in that area in cleaning up the community, providing youth employment, youth development, and overall adult and youth success, preparing people for life. So thank you so much to the gathering and thank you so much to Running Rebels. Um, um, this has helped the community grow. This has helped this district uh, become successful because people need places to eat, people need places to go. And uh, especially right now in the pandemic that we are um, experiencing, it has become a great asset and a great resource for our people in the 15th district. It's open to everyone, particularly the homeless, but they have not uh, discriminated against anyone. Everyone's welcome, uh, including your alderman. <laughs> so uh, I look forward to continued success, continued partnership. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you to the gathering. Lynn Hindlebrand, a special thank you for your leadership over there on 13th and Fond du Lac. We will continue to be a presence in the neighborhood. We will continue to feed the community. And thank you so much. Um, with that, I would like to bring on my good friend, the leader of Running Rebels along with her husband who have been a precious asset to the community, uh, Ms. Dawn Barnett with Running Rebels. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Alderman Stamper. My name is Dawn Barnett, and I am the co-executive director for Running Rebels Community Organization. We are so pleased to have the gathering as a partner. When we first were introduced to the gathering and heard about the services they offer and the program, we right away knew that this was meant to be. We're very passionate about the youth and the families that we serve, and we wanted to make sure that we partner with somebody who's like-minded and who shares our passion towards assisting the community. The Lindsay Heights area, the Running Rebels community, we have been so enriched by this partnership. Everything from the food giveaway on Tuesdays, which allows beautiful, brand name food to get into the hands of people who need it the most in the Lindsay Heights area, to also feeding our young people lunches and snacks, everything that they need to be nourished, to be healthy, so that we can do our jobs, which is mentoring and connecting with them on a whole different level. So this is a beautiful partnership. It has enhanced the work that we do. It has taken it to a different level and allows us to get more into the basic needs and have connections that we didn't have before. And the beauty of it is our ability to work with the gathering in such a way to where we both understand that this is a win-win for us, this is a win-win for the community and everybody that we serve. So we're so appreciative, we're proud of the work that they have done over the years and the work that we will do now and into the future together. Thank you, Dawn, for continuously supporting our mission and being such a great partner. We love being at the Running Rebels. At this point in our programming, the medium's room is closed for the evening. Thank you to Kat for bringing light and energy to our Mardi Gras celebration. I hope you all enjoyed your time with Kat. I know that I did. Natalie, can you bring over the raffle tickets for our first drawing? Okay, our first drawing is going to be for six different gathering cook team dinners that will be delivered to your door. Our first winner is Charles Kamali. Our second winner is Richard and Mary Thickens. Our third winner is Nancy Jacobs. 
The fourth winner is Beatrice Grimm. The fifth is Michelle Youngers. And last but certainly not least, Suzanne Allen. Then we'll go on to our gathering masks. We have 10 of those, so 10 lucky winners will be having a logoed gathering mask because we know we'll be wearing masks for quite some time. So our first winner is Rebecca Surgis, Nicole Baidier, Joey O'Connor, Hannah Dugan, Marion Byers, Mary Burke, Beatrice Grimm, two prizes. Ann Sherwood, Richard Schreiner, and Meg Edwards. And then we'll be drawing for our gathering jackets. We have some lovely gathering jackets. Our first winner is Meg Edwards. And our second winner is Sherry Egan. And then we drew for the Brewer's Package. The Brewer's Package includes, if you may recall, a autographed ball by Ryan Braun and a bobblehead of Chris and Yellick, the MVPs. So our Brewer's Package winner is Bob Gerhard. And then we have two handmade totes came from all the way from Vermont. Our first winner for the handmade totes is Marion Byers. And the second one is Angela Ryan. So congratulations, all you winners. Thank you very much. And then, guess what? I'm excited to announce that we have a surprise raffle drawing that's about to take place. And yes, you heard me right. We have a surprise raffle. Enter to win expressly yours personal chef experience with Chef Deborah. One winner will receive a five-course meal prepared by personal chef Deborah herself. This is valued at over $500 and is a one-of-a-lifetime experience. She can come to your home, prepare the meal at your home, and serve you at your home, or she can prepare it at her home and deliver it to you, whatever you want. That's the way she will do it. So no matter if you won or lost in our first raffle, we encourage you to enter for another chance to win. We currently would like to raise an additional $3,000 in the next five minutes, and we have faith that you can help us make that goal. We want to be able to keep hearts and stomachs full in Milwaukee, so please help us meet that goal right now. And here's how this raffle will work. Our musical performer, Olu, is getting ready to take center stage. And during Olu's performance, you have the opportunity to make a donation or purchase raffle tickets to enter into the surprise grand raffle. One raffle entry costs $25, and for every $25 donated, you'll get a chance to win that lovely prize. So ready, Olu, wanna take it away?
Thank you all so much for entering into the raffle, and to you, Olu, for that incredible performance. We really appreciate that. The raffle is now closed. One lucky winner will be selected at the end of the program who will receive a five-course meal for four prepared by Expressly Yours Personal Chef Experience with De Chef Deborah at the helm. You see, volunteers are the backbone of the gathering. Before the pandemic, we worked with over 2,000 volunteers in just one year. In 2020, we have had to learn how to adapt to our new ways of operating. With only one or two volunteers on the site, um, we had to really change what we were doing. Now in 2021, we're excited to welcome back up to five volunteers at our breakfast and dinner programs. And we're always looking for more volunteers to sign up and help us out. The Saturday lunch program is very special to the gathering. It's the first program we started way back in 1982. And today, this program is run entirely by volunteers. Volunteer cook team comes in, starts cooking, a volunteer coordinator comes in and coordinates, and then there's a volunteer serving group. All, every single Saturday. We're always looking for more volunteers, though, to fill the roles of our Saturday leadership team, from coordinators to cook teams to serving teams. Since we have a small staff, our volunteer are are crucial and we our success in serving our mission would not be able to take place without our volunteers. I'd like to welcome Nicole Herman, the board president for the gathering, our volunteer board of directors, our biggest supporters. They're always looking out for the best interests of our volunteers, staff, meal guests, and of course our mission. We're so thankful for all of our volunteers near and far and I'm excited for you all to hear their stories. Nicole? Thank you very much, Lynn. She is so right. We are so thankful for all our volunteers, and I'm so happy to be here at this event. I have been a board member for probably four or five years, and I'm representing our awesome board. There's 18 board members on our board serving right now as volunteers. We have a very active group of board members, and um, we do a lot to support our staff and make sure that everything's running smoothly through the with the gathering financially and, and through the programs, but really it's our staff that do a tremendous job and we just like to keep them happy. So our board does what we can to um, support the staff. I've been volunteering since um, 1995. I came as a Lutheran Volunteer Corps member and became a breakfast coordinator and then a staff member. And um, I've always enjoyed that volunteer aspect. As a board member, you wear several different hats. You can be a board member, a community out there um, supporting the gathering, or you can be a volunteer. And I like that hat the best. When I can come and volunteer at the meal program and meet new people, and even during these times when we have to be socially distanced from each other, I just really appreciate having a connection with someone when you're volunteering along some, alongside with someone, and it um, makes it all the more meaningful, especially during this time. So I want to thank you for coming to this event. It's a, it's a great gathering. It's a great place. It's a special place in my heart. And um, now we'll turn over to our breakfast volunteers. We started uh, uh, volunteering through our church in Pewaukee, St. Anthony, um, like two years ago, mainly because our kids are enrolled in the family program there and we do the volunteer, they need volunteer hours. But we keep coming back to the gathering because it's just a place where I think initially when we did it, all the folks came in and um, sat down and we served them and they got to sit and have some, enjoy the fellowship and the, each other's company. So that was really neat. And then we came back again last couple months ago, and now because of COVID, they haven't been able to gather, but we um, it's still an important mission, I think, or uh, an important, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, ministry for all these people. And so you're just kind of, you know, hoping to, you know, give them some comfort and some good food along the way. So, and it's been fun for our family to do it together. And we've been blessed with a lot of things in our lives, and we just find this is one little way that we can give back. Hey, 
Hey everybody, my name is Joey O'Connor. I am currently a senior at Marquette, originally from Atlanta, Georgia, and I've been volunteering at the Gathering since my very first year here at Marquette, and I've kind of slowly worked my way up to a kitchen coordinator more recently. But ever since I came to Milwaukee from Georgia, the Gathering has really made this area of Milwaukee feel like a home in my community, my home away from home, my new home. Um, and it's just being a part of this Gathering family that's this collection of amazing people that are so kind, generous, resilient, um, and just makes such a huge impact on this community. It just makes me so happy to be a part of this community, and I'm grateful that I've had these past couple of years to be a part of this. Thank you all for the continued support and incoming donations. We're almost ready to say farewell, but first we have a grand raffle prize winner to select. Natalie. Dun, dun, dun. And the winner is Anne Sherwood. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We hope you stay safe. We will hopefully be able to gather again soon in 2022 for our 40th anniversary celebration. Good night, everyone, and happy Mardi Gras. Thank you again.